Okay, it's Spooktober. Ooh. And today on the Utterly Unrelated podcast, we are tackling the one, the only, the Exorcist. <laughs> so I... I actually have a fun fact about the song, and I think I was going to save it for later a little bit, but I also think that I can't. (laughs) Um, I'm just too excited about it. So, okay, this time I'm, I'm experimenting with different ways to, like, do this because initially... I, like, wrote everything out long form, and that didn't fucking work, because then I had to, like, read, you know. I, like, wrote it out like an essay, and that didn't fucking work. So... Then I had tried to just before, like, write down little notes of, like, oh, just brief talking points. That didn't work. So now I'm using cue cards. So (laughs) there's my cue cards. Uh, But I have it set up to where it (laughs) looks like a shitty game of Jeopardy. Uh, So, like, on the back, I have, you know, quick stats, the hullabaloo, bonus pazuzu. So in the topic of like a virgin, mobile... Like version mobile for 500, it. Alex. Uh, the song. So after, like, after he shot everything, we're just going to jump right in. Yeah. Uh, after William Billy Friedkin, <laughs> who I will refer to as Billy from this point on, because everyone else fucking does. Oh, yeah. Uh, he had everything fairly well set, but he could fucking not find somebody to do the score. Mm-hmm. either. So he had... I'm going to say high standards, but more he was just, like, a very his way or the highway guy. Would would you say he's persnickety? Yes. That's my favorite word. That's my word of the month. Virgin pernicious, if I'm being honest. Yes. I've never met a pernicious, but I know. Oh, freed kid is. (laughs) He's a real pernicious knib. Uh, So this, he... It was more or less like the people who he wanted to do the score didn't want to do the score. And the people who were like, yeah, we'll do it. He would listen to their stuff and be like, bah, this is garbage. Um, So he was going through all these different albums. And this is like 1973. Uh, He's going through all these albums and he stumbles upon this random fucking album. Um, And the album was called Tubular Bells. Oh. And, yeah, and this song came on, and he was like, oh, fuck, that's the song, right? Yeah. And so it was by this brand new company out of London called Virgin Music Company, <gasps> owned by a young oh, Richard, Richard Branson. Branson. <laughs> See? It all comes back, folks. It all ties in. Yes. Yeah, our little... Lion Cowboy Man. That's right. I yeah. Remember from last episode. Also, I have to apologize. Um, my three-year-old is upstairs. He's giving us the, um, I don't know, the hillbilly mountain dancing. I need to, you know what? I actually know too much about that. Oh. I'll do, yeah. I love it. I love it. But so anyway, it's going to affect the um, audio of today. So just pretend like you don't hear teeny tiny toddler feet. Well, okay, here's the thing is the bumping and the screaming goes along with this because we're talking about The Exorcist. The Exorcist. So what, uh, you know what? A faint scream, a little bit of bump yeah. in the night. Oh, my little it guy. It fits. Spooky. He's helping. He's, he's helping. Aw. He is spooky. Sweet baby Wolfie. Little Wolfie. He's, you know, he's so funny because he's he'll, the best. he'll get out his, his comic books. He has one that's like the Mickey Mouse with Aww. the... Um, like the lonesome ghosts in a in a comic book form, and then he'll get out his spooky stories book, and that's what we read at night before bed. So yeah, oh. I was like, "You're my spooky baby. You're like me." <laughs> Alex is obsessed with all of the spooky stuff that's on TV oh, right now. I love it. Oh, me too. Oh, because I so always cute. was too. This it was like my favorite part of this month yeah. is there's always really good shit to watch. I wish that there was just like a forever Halloween channel. Mm-hmm. You know? Yes, totally. That'd be so dope. We should. We should make the Forever Halloween channel. (laughs) Oh, that'd be so sick. I would fucking love that. Oh, when we get all the money. Yeah, and it's just like, it's pretty much just October episodes. You know, like like the Halloween episode of Saved by the Bell. You know what I mean? Like, Yeah. (laughs) Zach Morris. 
fucking problematic asshole. I had such a huge crush on that guy when I was Me little. Me too. I was, not a, I, I was not a Slater girl. No. I, you know, to be honest, I was kind of a whoever I thought would take me. I would even go to Screech. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I can yeah. see it. Screech was more... okay. I mean, Attainable? Yes, that's exactly the word <laughs> I was looking for. He liked um, Tori Spelling, whereas Kelly Kapowski was a little harder to fucking compete with. I uh, yeah, I mean, in, in general, if... If I'm, like, interested in a person and I see that there is literally any fucking competition, I'm like, okay, well, you go explore those routes, and when you get tired, hit me up. Yeah. Like, when you get tired out or you're too old for people to find you attractive or you lose a tooth, I'm your man. I'm your huckleberry. Like, totally. Like, when when, when your music career has... Right. When you fall from grace, <laughs> get some DUIs, <laughs> some kids, some babies, mamas, gain a few pounds or lose too many pounds. Ooh, like yeah. sickly. Yeah. Yeah. I'm not even saying that I find it attractive. I just find being attainable and fully dependent on me attractive <laughs> because I love healthy relationships. You're so, you know what? Kudos to you. <laughs> Kudos to you because not all of us have been able to recognize a healthy relationship when we see one. Yeah. I, if I see a guy who's, I'm like, you're going to be fully dependent on me. My healthy relationship bells go off and I'm like, yes. <laughs> Going back to Pete Davidson, he's crazy enough to love me. Oh gosh, I'm not saying yeah. that you have to be crazy to love me and I'm not necessarily trying to make light of mental illness, but we have similar things going on upstairs. Mm-hmm. And so I'm like... Oh, okay. We're similar crazy. So maybe if you're crazy can kind of coincide with mine a little bit. Like, you know, if I'm in a manic phase and he's in a depressive phase, then maybe it can meet up and we can hang out, you know? Exactly. Pull each other out of our funks. Exactly. You have to find someone who compliments you. Yeah. (laughs) Shit. Now, that being said, (laughs) this is my worst nightmare. I watched The Exorcist when I was eight years old. I was eight and my dad was like, we don't have, we don't have any censorship in this house. Whatever's on, you watch it. There's this cool movie on HBO called The Exorcist. You should watch it with me and find out what happens when you don't listen to your parents. (laughs) (laughs) Holy shit. I know, right? Wow. Um, I'm definitely going to do that to Alex. Were you a really good kid after that point? I was even worse, I think, than I was to begin with. But this movie scarred me for life. I oh, remember. Yeah. And it, okay, so I was eight in 1989. So we are prime years of satanic panic. Yes. So, which um, is also worthy of its own deep dive. Totally. And so it's like, you know, you watch 2020 at night. What do they have? Demonic possession. What do you hear about on the news? Demonic possession. In cults. In Lots cults, of fucking cults. So many cults. Yeah. And like my family, predominantly Catholic, this just hit oh. so close to home for me because it was a very real possibility that if I was, if I looked at something the wrong way, I might get a demon in me. <laughs> You know, yes. that kind of a thing. So so even to be deep diving into this, and and granted, as like an adult, I definitely went back and I rewatched it where she spider walked down the stairs and it had all the new, all the new footage and everything. Still scared the shit out of me. Still scared the shit out of me. So, so deeply ingrained in my fear factory that like, I don't think I'll ever get over it. Well, actually, so going back to, to Catholicism, uh, before this movie... And especially, like, before the book, um, not a lot of people knew about exorcism. Oh, It was, yeah, yeah this is true. what really brought it uh, to the light, to the public. And initially, like, very, very immediately, the Catholic Church's response was like, that doesn't exist. That's not a thing. And then very quickly, they turned it around because they were like, oh, wait, no, it's obviously a thing. Okay, JK, JK, <laughs> you know. Um, and... The Pope actually, so th- under the category of hullabaloo for six, <laughs> the Pope actually had said, uh, demonology is an important part of Catholicism that ought to be studied more. Mm. So here is one of the, like, several ways that 
Catholicism diverges from Mormonism. Okay. Well, it's not sprung from Mormonism. It's two <laughs> ways that they do not a- agree, which is, honestly, man, I'd be hard-pressed to find more than four ways that Catholicism and Mormonism do agree. That's true. And I guess we should give you some backstory. Megan and I have been going back and forth in text messages for the last few days about, like, her Mormonism background, my Catholicism background, and kind of comparing notes on, like, why this was so fucking world destroying for me and not at all to like I felt Mormon. nothing. Yeah, she felt nothing. I mean I don't no. feel many things often. <laughs> so was... that's that alone, like nine eleven <laughs> happened, I felt nothing. So it's you know <laughs> it worked for Dennis Reynolds. <laughs> yeah, actually it works for me for the most part. <laughs> until I break and then I feel everything for oh, like a day. Too. That's all right. I just turn my phone off. It's fine. Uh <laughs> But, yeah, so it's really been interesting having that, which seems unrelated. But it's super related. It's related related in how fucking unrelated it is. Yeah, totally. Because in Mormonism, uh, they don't... And this might just be the ward I was in. Like, the ward... How do I put it? Like, okay, we were in, like, first ward or whatever, which that's just the time of day... That you go to fucking church. Like, okay. we went, you know, like, 7 a.m. till 3 p.m. I don't know. I, I don't actually have a bearing. I blocked most of it out. It wasn't traumatic. I was just tired. <laughs> I needed this space in my brain. Yeah. Uh, now, thanks to last podcast on the left, who did a deep dive into Mormonism and the background and all of this stuff, I actually am fairly well-versed in Mormonism to a point. Mormonism, one thing that I've actually learned is Mormonism varies Church to church, ward to ward, person to person. I know nothing. Because <laughs> I actually had, like, I did not have bad experiences in the Mormon church. Everyone was really fucking nice. Uh, they taught me how to cook. Everybody seemed to try really, 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 really hard to keep bringing me back into the fold. Mm. But it just, it never gelled with me. It just wasn't a thing that, you know, yeah. I'm not a religious person. I guess I never have been. I likely never will be. I had so many friends who were Mormon growing up because in where I lived in Vancouver, there was a huge seminary and there was a huge population that lived around the seminary. We had a seminary on site at my high school. Yeah, so do we. Yeah, so like that, it was part of the community that I grew up in and I never had a bad experience with someone. Yeah, they were fucking nice. Was you know? They were so nice. Yeah. They, they didn't even mind that I smoked by their seminary. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. That's, and that was the thing. Like, I'm, I, I have never made... It much of a secret about just who I am as a person. If anybody is shocked by any of that, that means that they just weren't fucking paying attention. Exactly. You know, like I, I am what I am. That's fine. Um, and yeah, the Mormons were totally fine with it. Like I would go to to Wednesday church and I would just be like super fucking goth and stink of cigarettes and Jack Daniels and they didn't really care. They'd feed me all the same. Aww. Yeah, they were nice. But I do remember I had gotten a book on like like Romani culture and like spells and shit. It wasn't even spells. It was like setting your intention shit like that. I think it was in, I don't know, sixth or seventh grade. I got it from Hot Topic. <laughs> and my grandmother saw it and she like she got real fucking mad because she was like, you're into witchcraft. I was like, I'm not really. Like, I'm just reading up. Because it was like, it was a really dope book. It had a bunch of information. I was like, I'm just reading up on different religions and different ways of living. And she didn't fucking like that at all. (laughs) And so, especially like for, let's say like a prophet or something to say something, like even alluding to demonology, immediately the Mormon church would just burn the fuck down. Everybody would implode. It would be like like in Avengers yeah. where everybody just kind of turns to ash. That's what would happen <laughs> if literally any higher up so much as acknowledged a demon. Thanos snap. Thanos snap. Oh. All Mormons would just be like, ah, and they'd lose their shit because they just don't necessarily acknowledge um, unpleasantries. That's so interesting. At least in my experience, in the in that specific ward... The way that I grew up was, yeah, like, they didn't acknowledge unpleasantries, um, and exorcism would be the farthest thing that they would do, because you have to acknowledge that there is a problem in order to even fix it. That's so strange to me. They just focus on the, on the bright side of life. Even, like, the, the symbol, um, like, the symbols that they use, there's no, you're not going to go into a Mormon church and see, like, crucified Jesus. You're going to see, 
a picture of Jesus stoked hanging out with lambs and little kids and eating bread and like smiling and just being a cool dude cool because white dude. he uh, he was sandy skinned but definitely oh, really? blonde. Oh. oh yeah, no, he wasn't. He wasn't like because he's very. White he wasn't Renaissance white. Okay. He wasn't. I mean, he wasn't Jesus colored. <laughs> yeah. But, <Right? laughs> Because that Mormonism has a whole new hot take on people who are Jesus colored that I'm not going to get into today that I definitely don't agree with. That definitely made me be like, fuck this religion, despite the fact that the people are really nice. Um, They're nice to me because I'm a small white female. Uh, So do Mormons... Now, this is something I don't know, even though I just claim to know everything. (laughs) (laughs) Um, So is there a devil? Like, in Judaism, there's no hell, there's no... Um, there is a devil, a specific guy who's the devil. Um, there doesn't seem to be a whole heck of a lot... Like, there's no archangels, necessarily, except for the angel Moroni, who oh, yeah. hid... The golden tablets. Uh, yeah, who... So, here's the thing. He had told Joseph Smith about the golden tablets, where they were, all this stuff. Um, but... In a lot of other religious texts, Christian religious texts, the angel Moroni was more of like a trickster. And <laughs> he's like low key? He could just, yeah. Oh he could just gosh. be fucking pranking. And so wow. here well, here's another thing though. Uh in I mean, I wanna say either the seventies or the eighties, there was this thing that was called like the like the multicolored this is gonna sound like a Hardy Boys novel, the case of the multicolored salamander. But more or less, yeah, because this dude was reinterpreting Jeez. some of the plates. The salamander yeah. letter. I watched yeah. this whole thing. He was reinterpreting some of it and was like, oh shit, it wasn't the angel Moroni, it was this multicolored salamander that had appeared. And he actually got fucking killed mm-hmm. because they were like, oh, we can't have our church looking crazy. Oh, yeah. If Can you... I just pause for a second? Cannot have Mormonism. <laughs> a cult, technically. Well, so Looking crazy. But... Yeah. No, there's a fucking great, there's a great documentary on Netflix. I just watched, I don't remember what it's called, but I remember that this guy was forging documents because he was, he was a Mormon who had lost his way and like didn't want to be part of the church. So he was forging all these documents and then selling them to the church and being like, it wasn't an angel. It was a little lizard and he was super cute. And he said all this stuff to like fuck with them and make fun of them. Yeah. They totally, he blew up in a fucking car bomb. Yeah. Um, oh yeah. They didn't fucking like that at all. So yeah, there's a definitely a dark side. Oh, oh, there's <laughs> actually, well, fuck. Okay. I'll touch upon it. Um, one of the larger reasons that at an earlier age I was like, oh, I'm not down for this is because, and Mormonism has changed. It evolves like every religion that's based solely on very specific things. It completely changes those things that are tenets of its fucking faith. Uh, one of the things... Sounds a little what? culty. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. It conveniently changes its source material pretty often. Uh, one of the things was Mormonism is super fucking racist. Yeah. Because um, apparently God had touched the bad people and made their skin dark. Yeah. Oh. That makes my butthole pucker and my stomach turn. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So. It's a lily white endeavor. Oh, it's real <laughs> fucking white. They deny it, but it's true. It's true. Um, but yeah, like in, in Mormonism, you won't see people wearing um, crucifixes generally. And I never thought about that until you brought it up. Yeah. They'll wear the CTR ring, which is choose the right. Oh. Yeah. That's what that means. Um, oh, shit. Yeah, when you're, like, when I was eight or seven or nine, they gave all of us CTR rings. Are they, like, promise rings? No, no, no. It's just to remind you to make good choices. And, like, like oh. if you're presented with, like, the choice to be a dickhead or a nice person, choose to be a nice person. Oh. Like, because everything's always a choice. You know, I appreciate the free will aspect of it. Like... Uh, yeah, I do, but it's just they flip-flop on that also. Yeah. Um... And so here's another weird thing is like, yeah, okay, like demonology, something like that would be very much um, taboo because then they would kind of think like that they're inviting that into their household. Does that make sense? And And actually Billy Graham, well, okay, like with the exorcist, Billy Graham had even said that the the very celluloid is 
the devil is in the very celluloid or like it's touched by that. So like by even watching it, you're inviting him into your house and into your theaters. And that actually is kind of Mormony. Um because they're not like allowed to watch, you know, content like that. That's interesting because nowadays, I mean, it sounds really it sounds really extreme coming from Billy Graham, but if you watch these spiritual advisors um, or people who make a whole living on TikTok and Instagram teaching people how to visualize and how to law of attraction and all this stuff, they say the exact same thing. Mm -hmm. Like, don't think about, don't talk about, don't adhere to, don't acknowledge. And so I think that that's one of those, it's one of those things that inherently we just keep perpetrating in our culture. Like, the more that you think of it, the more it gives it power over you. You know, or or whatever, like this this darkness. The, yeah. the like... way that I look at it, though, is like if, okay, let's say we're walking around in Southeast where it's, you know, the ground, the, the roads are just pitted out. I mean, you could lose a fucking leg in there. Yeah. Would you rather walk around Southeast in broad daylight, like looking at the ground as you're walking, or would you rather walk around it blindfolded at night? Oh, well, I don't love my ankles, so I'm taking night, but like, right. I know what you mean. Yeah. yeah. It's just interesting because this is like, it always comes back into fashion, like to uh, the witch hunt, there's the devil, satanic panic stuff. And it's like, oh, but you did it to yourself when you thought about maybe going to see the movie. Yeah. What were you wearing? Yeah. What, what, what it, did you ask for it? Right. Were you asking for it with your eyes? Yeah, you <laughs> yeah. absolutely were. You bought the ticket. Yeah. Got to ride the ride. Yeah. You know, it's, God, I just watched a thing on TikTok yesterday, and I know that's going to be emblazoned on my fucking tombstone. <laughs> I saw it on TikTok. This guy was talking about how it was like rules of a vampire and how you could unintentionally invite a vampire into your home just by having a welcome mat because... The... That's so funny. I actually, <laughs> a random thought like that had popped into my head a while ago. Yeah, like it's implied <laughs> that I'm welcome because of this mat. And so, but it's the same kind of thinking and it's just like, it's become this reoccurring theme. It's almost like a prosperity Bible type thing, which is mm-hmm. also super fucking toxic of like, yeah. oh, well, if you're poor or you're not doing well, it's because of you. It's because oh, you're yeah. not praying hard enough. Your faith isn't strong enough. We and... don't sell really shitty leggings. You're not selling them enough. We're LuLaRoe. I <laughs> saw that documentary. So yes. Good. I mean, yes. Was, uh, but I remember that trend when everyone yeah, was trying to that's, sell their fucking leggings No, that's on very prosperity Bible. Yeah, totally. So and toxic. actually going back to Lulu, LuLaRoe, Mormons. Yes. Yeah. yeah. It all comes full circle. Very nice people. Just don't scratch the surface. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. <laughs> now, I will say upstairs... A, a floor up in my bedroom I have three bottles of holy water and my rosary and my prayer cards so as someone who doesn't go to church <laughs> who does not practice Catholicism that is very much still embedded and in, in, oh man I, I saw a dead squirrel yesterday and I did the I crossed myself I okay <laughs> let's talk about this for just a sec so I, I I'm doing like DoorDash right now and working for record labels and traveling a lot and so all the fucking time now I'm seeing not just roadkill, like roadkill I can explain because there's tire marks, but like on literally like the sidewalk or the side of the road, just dead squirrels, dead things that do not look run over. Me too. That look fresh kills. Me too. Uh, poison? Are people... I think maybe. Like fertilizing their oh. lawn with... Poison for the winter or something. You for, know what? That's because I'm trying to figure out like what is going on. Yeah, I'm because Pe- I don't that think too. that people are probably spraying for weeds. I would assume that like that would be more of a summertime or springtime thing. I don't know about anywhere else in the city, but here up on on the mountain <laughs> on Mount Scott, um, like I know my neighbor behind me. Like this is prime skunk breeding time, so all the skunk babies are out, and he just picks them off with a pistol. Um, these don't look, there's, there's no injury to the body. Well, that's the strange part. So what I'm wondering is, is this a big breeding time in this life cycle of critters that like poisons are being put out or are... Like, I've seen a ton of raccoons me and too. squirrels. It's raccoons and squirrels mainly. And skunks for me, skunks and cats, which is really sad, but oh. I live, people fly down my road. I'm just so curious because yeah, it doesn't look like, I don't know, strange. 
Maybe yeah. it's a sign of the end times. Because on my episode, we're going to talk about the omen. Oh, shit. So, yes. oh, maybe between that's a good the demons one. and the antichrist, it's all being foretold. Yeah, that's possible. That is possible, I think. <laughs> um, I mean, there was, there was definitely a lot of hullabaloo as the back of my card says, surrounding this movie. A lot of it, honestly, was kind of bullshit, I think. Like, okay, um, somebody fainted and broke their jaw at one of the screenings. Um, But, okay, like, looking at the people who were saying to the news, oh, I fainted, it seemed like it was... Like, they wanted to just participate in this mass event. Does that make sense? Like, Oh, totally. Yeah. Sort of like... um, um, you know, like I was there, I was a part of it. I'm, I, yes. I have this story I can tell my kids cause I was so affected. I fainted. Right. And, yeah, totally. Well, they did the same. Well, I'll get into it with the omen, but some kind <laughs> of viral marketing campaign yeah. where the more that you talked about this stuff, yes. the more scary it was, the more it drummed up people who wanted to come see it. And that's so. exactly it. And it was definitely for, for the exorcist, it was a little bit 50, 50 on, um, the, on especially like with priests whether they completely hated it and were like you're bringing the devil into your home or if they're like well i mean it's really actually a good tale because good won over evil and this is making people be more weary of the devil because right before this like the year fucking before or earlier that yeah earlier that year um because it was released the day after christmas in 1973 earlier that year um, the Pope had actually said something about, you know, not enough people are believing in the devil. Uh, oh, yeah, th- exactly. The devil's falling out of vogue, fading uh, into obscurity. And so this actually kind of, it reinvigorated interest in the Cath- in the Catholic Church and Catholicism yes. in general. Wow. Yeah. Um, but yeah, there was, there was definitely a shitload of, of hullabaloo around this that... Is it kind of surrounds a lot of scary movies. Actually, even um, with like a lot of the Conjuring series, things like that, where they do the reaction shots, that's still just drumming up the exact same hullabaloo. Um, oh, oh, <laughs> there was this ad that they had to pull. It was a very seizure inducing <gasps> ad. Oh, and guess what? They had to pull it. Because people were getting seizures. I'm talking like flashing lights, shit like that. I saw the ad and it is cool. But yeah, if if I was at all prone to seizures, I would fucking have one. It was just flashing lights and Jeez. ominous. Yeah. So like, yeah. Oh, no shit. <laughs> all the flashing lights gave you a seizure? Huh. Must be the devil. Like, really? <laughs> the devil mm. did it. I. Hmm. Totally. So one of the things uh, that I did to prepare for this podcast was I, as I drove around, I listened to kind of other podcasts to see what was consensus, what was obscure, what kind of uh, stuff I could dig up that was cool, but also wasn't bullshit. Because like, I have to go through and verify my my sources and fact check and everything. So There's there was a lot of urban legends surrounding all of this stuff. Yes. So it was... Or even finding consensus urban legend. Yes. Of like, these are the bones. This is roughly what everybody says about it. Yeah. And then kind of building it from there. So it would be easy to just watch a thing on the Shutter channel or whatever. And I did that, but I did that like last night after all my research was yeah. done. But, just to be know, like, oh, okay, cool. This is the sequence I should go yeah, in. Yeah. Like you're you're doing the, the due diligence. To, Trying to, yeah. To bring our listeners the very best possible information i'm attempting to i like making term papers and so i just make a term (laughs) paper like every week uh i had listened one of the very last things that i did after i i pretty well had everything down what i was gonna do uh i found this fucking deep dive it was dramatized it was i want to say seven parts um it's called inside the exorcist and it's put out by um wondery and this guy mark ramsey he researches it and writes it and it's it's definitely dramatized and it it gave me a better insight into uh you know like william peter blatty the guy who wrote it and also wrote the screenplay uh and also billy friedkin it kind of gave me a better insight into them um but so uh, all of this, like William, William Peter Blatty, mm-hmm. yeah. he had 
written this slightly based on the exorcism of this guy who uh, is most often referred to as Roland Doe. Now, if I had scratched just a little bit below the surface, I could have found the guy's real name. But, like, he probably, like, he pretty fucking obviously doesn't want to be found. Yeah. Um, so the exorcism had taken place in Maryland, I believe. Oh, my gosh. I'm so sorry to interrupt. I got an email this morning from Coast to Coast Radio because you know I listen to Coast to Coast Radio. <laughs> and it, it said that some couple, some unsuspecting couple inadvertently bought that house without realizing it was the exorcist house. That is my fucking stomach. Those are not demons. I'm so sorry. Those are absolutely so demons. Loud. It's, but, um, you know what's funny is actually in that the inside the exorcist, uh, they had said that that house got plowed down. Yeah. So I'm not sure. Conflicting information because now some... And un- it's a playground. Unsuspecting couple seems to have bought it. So... I would like to dive a little deeper. Yeah, absolutely. I think that we should because that actually kind of goes not necessarily into murder real estate, but it walks, you it know, walks the line. it's in the same neighborhood. For sure. Um, but so in this super cool, fairly dramatized uh, series I had listened to, I'm and honestly, I'm not sure if that's bullshit or not. What I just told you that it got plowed down because it, I only got that information from this, from the uh, dramatized series. And I so, will say, you know, I like the series. I, I had Aaron listen to it also. I did. I listened to it. Um, I'm almost done with it. Um, so I'm a writer. I write. That's I make my living writing, which is... <laughs> that's funny. That's, I, I don't make much money. <laughs> but I always wanted to be able to say that. But I'm a writer. And so one of the things when I work with my editor, one of the things that he taught me is your audience will not trust you if you give them conflicting evidence. So I will say going into this podcast, I was biased because I was like, wait, is that a reenactment? Is that, is that fiction? Is it nonfiction? And so I had a very different experience with this podcast. It is a great podcast. It is. But I just don't trust the narrator because I don't know what's real and what's not. Yes. And it does out like when you're, when you go to click on it and read the bio and like the description it does say that it's based oh, yeah. upon yeah it's very upfront about that so yeah that was the only reason it's I mildly fictionalized it. but yeah i'd as i was listening to it i did wonder like okay well how much of this is bullshit and how much is real just because because i already had a fairly yeah. good basis of what was real and what wasn't from having done so much research already but it's one of the things that I had written down initially and I was like, oh, dope, like, you know, maybe he did like a really sick deep dive was like he had called the the guy who had actually gotten uh, possessed. He called him like Bobby and wrote this whole narrative about like he worked at NASA for 20 years and da da da. And I was like, no shit. And then the very, very end happened, and I was like, oh, that's bullshit, probably. And I was like, oh, man, that was a really good narrative, though. <laughs> um, so, yeah, I I did go through and, and make sure that... But it's it, tough. Yeah, yeah, well, actually, one thing that I did really enjoy about that is that Linda Blair apparently was, like, a horse girl. She I was Yeah, that. she was a horse girl, and she actually has... Uh, a foundation that rescues dogs. Yeah, and she, like, saves dogs, which I think is just super That's sweet. Amazing. Yeah. She tried to save Rick James with her love. Nobody, nobody could have. No, they dated for a while, but... Man, that must have been fucking wild. I know, right? What a weird couple. It seems like a weird couple, but... Yeah, Rick James and anyone seems like a weird couple. He was his so own true. thing. So true. <laughs> <laughs> He's just that mysterious dude who needs to, well, who needed to just, like, go around unattached so he could just be full him all the time. Yeah, he did That's not. kind of my impression of him, you know? Yeah. Like, some people just don't need to hitch their fucking wagon to anything. Yeah. They are their own thing. He's the Peter... He's the Peter S. Pumpkins. David S. Pumpkins. <laughs> David S. Sorry, he's the David S. Pumpkins <laughs> of his genre. I do like Peter Pumpkins better. I like David S. Pumpkins. He's his own thing. <laughs> um, so, oh, one thing that I thought was super interesting, and once again, uh, this might have been bullshit, but I saw a couple of sources that said it was true, was the... So in the very beginning of the movie, when they're, you know, fixing to dig up Pazuzu, who's the demon, uh, they're not digging him, they're digging, like, his figurine up. Uh, they had to shoot that in Iraq. And instead of shooting it when it was, like, you know, 
a decent temperature. They were shooting it when it was like 130 fucking degrees. <laughs> no joke. So, Human skin burns at like 120. Yeah. So like when I say burn, I don't mean sunburn. I mean smolders. Yeah. So he was just going... Friedkin was just going for the most miserable experience possible. For every single person on cast. So whenever they talk about the curse of the exorcist, there are certain uncanny events, I do have to say. Like, some things, I'm like, huh, okay. Some things were blamed on it that happened in, like, the fucking year 2000. That's uh, a bit of a stretch. It's a yeah. huge stretch, yeah. Um, But, yeah, I honestly believe that William Friedkin was the only actual curse on this set. <laughs> Oh, I will. Yeah. Pr- I have note cards that all of them will prove my case. <laughs> Fucking seriously, he was the real terror. Um, so when he had met with uh the UN rep from Iran to see like, hey, can we shoot there? Uh, the guy had said, well, okay, yeah, like under a few stipulations, you have to use Iraqis as crew. And he was like, oh, I didn't know that you guys had like a film industry out there. He's like, no, you're gonna have to train them. And he's like. Okay, okay, well, it was the second one. And he said, you have to teach our makeup people how to make fake blood. And he said, yes, and ask no more questions, and then they shot the stuff. Oh, boy. No further questions needed? Nope. He was like, yep, sounds good to me. Uh, so he, and Friedkin had actually started his career as a documentarian. Um, so I, I don't know. I thought that that was kind of cool. That's he did, yeah, he did, like, a handful of documentaries before he even got into this. He he had done The French Connection, too. Oh. Yeah. Ooh, I didn't know that. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah, I know. <laughs> Fucking weird. Um, but, so, let's delve into some of the stuff that, that was supposed to be the curse of the exorcist. Yes. So, there's nine deaths associated with the movie. Everybody always throws around that nine deaths number. Um, I could find seven. Hmm. Wow. Seven that everyone could agree on. So the other two are bonus. <laughs> like bonus, if you're not yeah. too sure how many people are coming over, you think roughly 12. So you cook for 15. I think maybe. Holy. Yeah, I think that that's it. Yeah. So and some of these are a stretch. Okay. Um. Linda Blair's grandpa died. Mm, grandpas die. Grandpas die. Yeah. It's sad but true. Now, Max von Sydow, the guy who played Father Marin, yeah. his brother actually died the first day of filming. I don't know if it was an elder brother, but this is the 70s, and if you were over 50... Yeah, I get you. Sort of like yeah, a grandpa died. Yeah, exactly. Natural causes. Yeah. Yeah. Um, the dude who was in charge of refrigerating the scene, uh, oh, like the, ex- yeah. yeah, cause they didn't have, you couldn't just, you know, put mouth steam out and post. It was actually, <laughs> That's right. it was 10 below. Wow. Yeah. And they would shoot until they'd start really, really early in the morning and they shoot until about midday when it was only like, they could only get it to 32 degrees, you know? <laughs> um, Son of a bitch. I know. Yeah, it's only freezing. Fuck this. So, uh, yeah, the refrigeration guy died. Um, uh, do we know how he died? I don't. Okay. I don't. Okay. I'm willing to t- Did he die during production? Yes. I'm willing to take that for curse. Curse one, uh, naturals two. Maybe. Because I don't know how old he was. He might have been old. Who fucking knows? He was 42. He died of natural causes. It's the 70s. The 42 <laughs> is like 90. Exactly. You know? I'm going to say one maybe for curse. It's an two ish. for sure. Yeah. yeah. Okay. One ish, two Fugazis. So um, two actors who died in the movie died in real life before the film was released. Ooh. After they acted their scenes, obviously. That's um, two more for curse on my side. No, because listen. Uh oh. Check this out. So okay, Jack McGowan died of the flu. There was a, a flu epidemic oh. in England. Oh. In well, and he was in like his fifties or sixties. Oh yeah, he he already had a foot in the grave. Yeah. Um. So in the movie, he had played director Burke Dennings okay. in the very like toward the very beginning. Yeah. 
Um, because Reagan's mom is an actor. He did look old. He was fucking old. Yeah. He was old mm-hmm. for sure. Jack McGowan was. I mean, if I were to look at him now. On the street, I'd be like, oh, you're in your 70s, but it was the 70s then, and so he could have been 45. People age shitty then. Really bad. Yeah. yeah. Um, but in the movie, Reagan had broken his neck and thrown him out the window. In reality, he died of the flu, which is better. Who knows? I think that the broken neck was quicker. Quicker. Yeah. We're sh- Okay. We're shifting one to natural. Yeah. Okay. And um, Vasiliki Malin... Molinaros, um, played Damien Karras' mother. Oh, Damien. Yeah. Oh, Damien. Okay, she, she died like she... of old age. Okay, I was going to say, she, she sounded was 100. well into, yeah, she was yeah. a minimum 70. Yeah. Okay, we're shifting columns on that one, too. We're back to one, maybe. <laughs> yeah, that is a one, For maybe. Curse. Because once again, we don't know how old the reefer guy was. Yeah. Or, you know, maybe he died of being cold. <laughs> uh... <laughs> <laughs> Fucking no, he was really good at his job. Yeah. Those long was, hours, man. He was a method refrigerator. Yeah, <laughs> he was. He refrigerated everything with his own cold breath. Uh, actually, speaking of that, so uh, given that it did have to be so cold on set, everybody on set got sick at one time oh. or another. Because, I mean, it's cold. Yeah. Except for Linda Blair. Mm. Oh. Mm. Touched by the devil or good immune system because she was a child. Right. (laughs) Exactly. That was a funny thing was like a lot of people were like, oh, she's the youngest and most vulnerable. I don't know, dude. She was like 11 or 12. I think that if any, like at that age, that's kind of prime. Yeah. Like you can just eat. You can just eat vials of germs yeah. and be completely fucking fine. Oh, yeah. I mean, yeah. kids are still licking door handles at age 11. I'm sorry. I know some 11-year-olds that are still doing some questionable things with germs. Like, yeah, if you're alive, your immune system is good. Oh, for sure. <laughs> um, One of the other ones, too, was one of the cameramen. Um, So his... I found things that say his toddler died. I found things that said... That his uh, infant died. I found things that said that his newborn died. I also found things that said his child was stillborn. So Mm. one of his progeny in one way or another stopped living. Okay. But let me go back to Mm -hmm. this was 1973. There was still fully leaded gasoline. Fully leaded gasoline. People smoked and drank when they were pregnant, and it was not really that big of a deal. So once again, no seatbelts. Another one that I had heard, but I could not confirm from more than one source, was one of the people who watched, like, the set got murdered. Hmm. Hmm. Like, one of the security guards on set, maybe? It was like, I only really heard it referred to a couple of times and I couldn't find absolutely anything to corroborate it. So that's a maybe? Hard maybe. That's a hard maybe, I'm yeah. I'm liking this game of Stump the Curse Death, though. Right. I like it. And then here's some of the bad things other than death that happened on the set. Okay. Uh, the two of them are like kind of well known. You know, we all know that Linda, or actually I didn't know this going into it. I think I had heard it maybe. Um, Linda Blair had suffered a lower spine fracture during, like, one of the possession scenes. The lacing came a little bit undone. Um, and so they were legitimately giving her shitty, crazy whiplash. And so she was just screaming, you know, make it stop, make it stop, which was actually the line she was supposed to say. So they just thought that she was, like, acting the fuck out of that scene. Wow. Well, and so Friedkin was kind of like... He was a, a method direct. He was a Kubrick. Yes, he was a method director. <laughs> um, and so he would just, yeah, just shoot guns off, shit like that, just to get fucking reactions. He was a real dickhead. And so, like I said, we're going back to he was the actual curse. Yeah, he was the curse. Yeah. And so, oh, guess what? The take where she was like, I'll oh, make it stop. Like, because they were actually fucking injuring her. Yeah. That's the one they used. Oh, my God. Yeah. Another thing that was really lent to the whole credos of, like, the 70s don't give a fuck. They didn't even send her the doctor. They didn't? 
it's just, oh. Yeah. Her little baby back, and they didn't even fucking send her. They didn't it. give a fuck. Oh and they were like, what are they going to do? You oh know? Oh, my God. Yeah. Um. So that's dope. And, know. yeah, I know, right? Oh, uh, the set burnt down. Hmm. Like, before, the, I believe the impression that I get is it was... After they had built the set and furnished it, um, everything burnt down save for the set for Reagan's room. Oh. But once again, it's... 70s electrician? Uh, yeah, so it's conflicting. Some people say nobody knows what happened. Some people say like a bird flew into the electrical box, um, things like that. But yeah, the, the whole thing about it is supposed to be, oh, everything except for the room where the exorcism is. Um, but I don't know where the room was because that yeah. room specifically had to be refrigerated. Yeah. Oh, yeah and so yeah. there's a good chance. Like, I mean, my, my aunt has like a big ass walk-in refrigerator and I mean, just in restaurants I've worked, you know, and yeah. seen walk-ins and I'm pretty sure if the restaurant burned down inside the walk-in would be fairly fine. No, totally. And they would have yeah. to insulate it pretty well, you know, to be able to get that shit to work. So that's kind yeah. of my explanation on that of that's why that's not necessarily spooky. Totally. That's, um, yeah. Ellen Burstyn is, A, a wonderful, beautiful actor. I fucking adore her. B, she broke her fucking coccyx. So there was another take where Reagan kind of, like, smacked her away. And her head legit thudded. That was one of those... It That was the take they fucking used. That thud that you hear, the loud, ouch thud. Yeah. That wasn't just put in and post that was the sound of her head hitting the fucking wall she got a bad concussion second she broke her coccyx and um she was in a harness that kind of went you know around her pelvis area oh, yeah yeah and um she had even told the director she was like look somebody's gonna get hurt please don't pull me so hard and he's like well it has to look real and she's like yeah i understand it has to look real but you're going to fucking injure me yeah And that was, like, I hate to pull any, I hate to pull the gender card, but this is one of those things where, like, generally women, especially women of color, she's not, she's a white lady, but, like, you know, especially women of color aren't believed when they say, hey, don't be so fucking rough with me. Yeah, totally. Totally. And. Oh, she doesn't mean it. She'll be fine. Right. They don't trust her to just act. Yeah. They feel that they need to elicit this out of her. Even though at that point she was a well-established actor. Yeah. Yeah, she really fucking was. And so, um, yeah, they uh, broke, ended up breaking her coccyx. And she had to use crutches for the rest of the time on set. Those poor woman. I know. Those poor I women. I fucking know. Seriously, yes. that's the fuck of it. Like, they're just... Ah! So... Another thing going into those poor women is the the woman who played Reagan's uh, voice double when she was like oh doing the when she was voice? full fuck yeah when she was full ass possessed um, she was actually a really famous voice actor Mercedes McCambridge. Oh no shit. Yeah. From I like heard of her. Yeah. I listened to a lot of old radio. Yeah. Uh like old radio shows and stuff. And yeah, like so Wow. And she was pretty old at the time. Like, I mean, she was I don't know, like I wanna say into her sixties or fifties, sixties, seventies, somewhere around there. Cause she was really big in like the forties. Yeah. Um I didn't know that. Yeah. That's cool. And so she put her whole fucking she went just ass deep into this performance um she hadn't smoked and drank in years but she in order to get all of these performances out of her like she would smoke and drink and just record for a couple hours at a time she said she'd only do it if she had like two of her priests with her and then she'd just cry her fucking demons out and then go back she had to really like reach deep inside her fucking self to get these performances which like as um in my former life, I guess, um, I I was a singer also. Like, I did, like, punk rock things and uh, metal things sometimes. She was really, really good. I was all right. <laughs> I was problematic. Uh, and 
so I I do understand. Like there was a couple of songs where like in order to really get the oomph, like yeah, I had to like conjure up some crazy shit in order to be able to give the performance. So like I get that, man. And she put her whole ass into it. And when the initial like the very first screening for everybody was done, she wasn't even fucking credited. No. Warner Brothers later, after she was like, what in the fuck? Warner Brothers later came and was like, hey, so, like, what's up? You know? That's fucked up. Yeah. Um, If that's how they screwed her on the credits, I wonder if they even fucking paid her. Oh, it gets worse. So, um, the person who was Reagan's body double for, like, the... The crucifix scene, oh. um, some levitation scenes, uh, you know, like when her face flashes to Pazuzu's face? Yes. Yeah. So they had used this other lady um, as her body double, Eileen Dietz. And Eileen Dietz was still, my impression of it was she was still trying to kind of cut her teeth in the industry. And so she was like, look, you know, like, can you please credit me? Yeah. So I can go to the screen, screen Actors Guild and try to get better jobs and stuff. And he was like, initially he was like, nah, fuck you. Like what? Linda Blair's the one who did all this. So initially oh. all this had been billed initially as Linda Blair did literally fucking all of it. Oh my God. Because. And I'm sure she had no say in it being that way. No, no. She was a very, she was a young kid, yeah, you know. it's not like she was like, excuse me, pardon me, I'll be taking yeah. all the credit for this. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> like, but Oh, here's the real fuck of it, though. The, um, she was treated as though she had. Because oh, yeah. oh. by, like, the Academy Awards, for instance, she got snubbed by the Academy Awards. So, um, they had ended up winning the Oscar for Best Sound and Best Adapted Screenplay. And then when Charles Bronson went up to present for Best Supporting Actress, everybody just assumed she was a shoo in. Yeah. Because they had already gotten, I mean, her performance is very good. Yeah. And, okay, to her credit, um, her body double, Eileen Dietz, was only really in the, the film for 20 eight and a half seconds cumulative oh wow but they were the impactful 28 and a half seconds and so it was actually a whole thing it was like pea soup gate or some shit oh Um, shit (laughs) oh no it was a whole it was its own fucking scandal wow yeah because the pea soup scene was actually another one that the body double was there for wow yeah a lot of like the stuff that was really physically taxing and i don't know if it was just after i don't know at what point the scene was shot where Linda Blair had been injured. So I don't know if it was just everything was shot after and the the things that were more demanding that she literally couldn't fucking do uh, was where Eileen Dietz was standing in or, you know what I mean? Like, I don't know. Yeah, totally. Um, But yeah, regardless, she was um, snubbed for best actress and it actually ended up being Tatum O'Neill for uh, Paper, Paper Moon. Moon. Yeah. I love that movie. Right. It's a, and it is a good movie. And she and her dad, Ryan O'Neill, were in it. It was a very heart, heartfelt movie. No. But um, yeah. so I don't know, man. My theory is that Charles Bronson might have pulled the first round of fuckery. Mm. Uh, just like. Interesting. Yep, yeah. Exactly. Exactly. So I'm just saying it might just be like, okay. like how La La Land didn't actually win. Yeah. You remember? Yes, uh, I remember. Might be like that. I don't yeah. know. I don't know, man. Charles Bronson might have been drunk. <laughs> uh, I have nothing to back that up. <laughs> zero. <laughs> zero fucking evidence. Nothing. Just my own theories. Um, <laughs> but, yeah, I, I I thought that that was really, uh, really interesting, though. That's very interesting. Yeah. And so actually going back to Mercedes McCambridge, one of the things that uh, a lot of people do a credit to being like part of this curse is her son um, killed. And I honestly, I can't remember what like part. I don't know if it happened in the year 2000 or if it happened in 1974. Um, I could have looked it up. But I didn't. <laughs> you can if you're so interested. Uh, right, exactly. God, quit grilling me. Jeez. Um, <laughs> he killed his wife 
his nine-year-old daughter, his 13-year-old daughter, and then himself. But when he killed himself, he put two guns to his own head, uh, Boondock Saint style. He went full family annihilator and then Boondock Sainted himself. Oh, yeah, and he, in his suicide letter, it was scathing, like, saying that Mercedes McCambridge ruined his life by being more focused on his on her career than on him, and da 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 It was, oh, man, it was a whole fucking thing. Jeez. I know. Dickhead, right? Super dickhead. Get some fucking therapy. Not everything is because of our moms. Yeah, maybe just... Just only kill yourself. Yeah. If that's yeah. how you feel. Why take your family? I fucking. That's my thing. Why mm. take your family? Especially yeah. like the ones where it's like they, you know, the guy like wanted to fuck around. Yeah. I don't know. Talk to your wife. Maybe she wants an open relationship. Maybe yeah. she doesn't want to fuck you anymore. Exactly. Like, maybe she would rather have a divorce than fuck, and you can fuck whoever. Yeah. Maybe she doesn't want to want to die. Yeah. I bet you it's she did. It's possible. Fucking. It's possible she didn't want to die. Oh, my God. I see that piece of shit who killed his kids with the fucking God, fishing Chris spear. Chris Watt. Oh, wait. Oh. oh, no. The other one? I can't even with yeah, that one. I can't. Those, they're babies. They're mm-hmm. little angels. And then Literally. Chris Watts. Oh. oh, you want to fuck some strange, but you got to kill everybody you fucking know? Who the hell do you think? Mm. Right? Mm-hmm. That fucking mm-hmm. guy. Uh, fuck that guy. Fuck fucking that guy. asshole. Oh, more murders though, too. Murder. 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 Uh, so <laughs> the you know, in the I don't want to say beginning, like the middle, the first scant after the first quadrant, myth. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. With yeah. The, yes. Yes. The yes. CT scan. Yes. Yeah. Yes. That's the exact fucking spot. God, get out of my head. <laughs> weird. Yes. <laughs> I could see it as you were describing it. That was the weird part. Yeah, during the first quadrant, the end of the first quadrant of the movie, yes. when they're trying to figure out what the fuck is wrong with Reagan. Um, yeah, the CT scan area. So the dude who like put her into the CD, the <laughs> The CT scan. My brains are my brains are made of spaghetti. I'm starting to think that maybe we're just in. We don't have enough ventilation here or something. Oh, there's plenty of ventilation okay. for me. I was gonna say there's. I'm small. Thing. I don't use air. <laughs> um, so this was shot in the NYU radiology department, and Billy Friedkin had gone there before. To kind of get an idea of like what the procedure looks like, how to make it real looking. And he kind of actually had a habit of doing this, which I think is actually a little bit dope, despite the fact that he's the worst psychopath of he'd go on scene somewhere and be like, you guys, you guys are fucking brilliant. I want all of you in my movie. (laughs) And I don't know if he was just really drunk and on a lot of coke because that sounds like something. Yeah. Yeah. I could picture him. So I have pictured him walking into like a Safeway. (laughs) 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 And like they're they're making him a sandwich or something. He's like, you're great. I want you in my movie. And then I have pictured him walking into like a fucking stroke joint. (laughs) (laughs) Where he's getting like jerked off. And pretending it's a real massage. It's just like, you're great. I'm going to put you in my movie. I'm going to put you all in my movie. <laughs> just strokes her face with this weird, jizzy, <laughs> wet hand. <laughs> throws some bees on her and runs off. Oh, no. There's a tip. Yeah. <laughs> the tip is bees. <laughs> Pulls a bunch of bees out of his pocket. <laughs> <laughs> I wish there was some way, like Minority Report style, to like project what I pictured right now. Like after that, then you hear the Betty Hill song, patting <laughs> the bees away from her face, going like, "Curse you, <laughs> curse you, Billy, curse you!" And he's shuffling behind her with his pants around his ankles, just like, "I'm a silly And guy. he's got binoculars for no reason. <laughs> yeah. And then like an old policeman comes stumbling in. <laughs> Tries to get him with his baton. Oh, he throws more jizz yeah. and more bees. More bees. <laughs> <laughs> oh. uh, and luckily, due to untreated type 2 diabetes, his jizz is like honey. <laughs> <laughs> If that's like the dead giveaway, you're blowing somebody and you're like, oh, you need to go to the doctor. That was like. It was like honey. That was like a cup of honey. It was really jizzy, strange honey that smelled like a permanent marker. (laughs) You probably have an STD. You're probably dying. You may be dead already. Yeah, right. If you're not, here's some bees. (laughs) In your face. Bees Uh, in your face. 
<sighs> Speaking of jizz and bees, uh, Paul Bateson <laughs> was the chief neuroradiology technician. And uh, he, so he's the one who, like, he put Reagan in the the tube. Yeah, yeah He's yeah. the cute one. Yeah, he's got a close cropped beard. He looks kind of young. Yeah. He looks cute. Like I would do. Yeah. yeah. Like youngish too. I don't he looks yeah, 27, yeah. you know. That's exactly where I would pick. Yeah. It. Yeah. Um so in September of 1977, so what like 4 years later roughly, um the body of Addison Verrill, who was a reporter for Variety, was found in his own apartment, in Addison's apartment. Oh, Addison's shit. body found in Addison's apartment. Okay. Um, and a little later, um, Paul Bateson, the dude who I was talking about with the bees and jizz, <laughs> he called the village reporter to confess to, um, he said that they did some drugs and they drank a little bit and they banged. And then they went back to uh, Addison's place and he hit him in the head with a pan and stabbed him in the chest. So I don't know if it was like one of those kind of, you know, buyer's remorse things on. Well, it's the seventies. And so like, he might've, totally he might've, you know, been gay or bi or queer and, but had like a bunch of like shame surrounding it. Totally. I didn't mean to laugh so hard. I just, I just pictured him like a Karen at the customer service desk. <laughs> Let me see your manager. <laughs> yeah. You gave me a boy, and I know I asked for a boy, and I smiled when you handed me one, but now I feel like I should have said, girl, and it's your fault you tricked me into a boy. <laughs> That's exactly yeah. it. That is exactly And so, oh. yeah, he wanted to see the ultimate manager who's gone. <laughs> Let me see oh, your maker. Yeah, I want to talk to your maker. Right? Oh, and since boy. his parents weren't around, he was like, eh, next best. And uh, so, oh. well, okay, so when he called and he had said that, apparently it took no fucking time at all to trace it back to being Paul Bateson. And he had said something to the effect of, like, if he gets caught, he wouldn't be able to practice anymore. And so they're like, well, it's either piano or medicine. <laughs> So that's the only two things you could do then. Um, and so... I love how he inflated his title like he was a fucking <laughs> surgeon all of a sudden. Oh, you're not going to be able to hit I know, right? start on the CT machine. Yeah. <laughs> fucking what dickhead. Dick. Actually, so weirdly enough, later on, uh, Friedkin interviewed him for the movie Cruising. Like, to... I, if you guys haven't seen it, honestly, you're not really missing a whole lot. It's... If you have literally nothing more to watch and you're kind of fixing to go to bed and you're like, ah, I just want some background noise, put it on. It's not terrible. It just kind of is one of those movies roughly about something, but honestly about nothing. Like our podcast. It's like if our podcast <laughs> like our was podcast. a movie but wasn't funny. Also, um, he was featured in Mindhunter-ish. So, okay, like... Oh, this the one d- that was the... the oh, yep. okay. So this guy only actually... According to, like, pretty much everybody, he only really killed one person, but then a bunch of other crimes that were vaguely similar only because they happened to gay men. Uh, Like, a bunch of bodies were found, and they're like, oh, it must be that guy, because he kills the gays. Fucking you know, it's, lazy. It's the fucking 70s. Yeah, lazy. 70s, early 80s. Yeah, it is. Yeah. Ugh. They were like, oh, it's that guy. That He's guy. killed a gay. He must kill all of them. Fuck. Yeah, I hate um, the seventies. Except for when the fashion, born. the yeah. fashion's good. Yeah, the punk rock's all right. That's true. Punk the food, the food is terrible. Oh. Aspic. Oh my god, aspic. That was what I was gonna say. Holy yeah. shit! Have you ever wondered what hot dogs and lime jello would taste like? <laughs> Fucking aspic. Yeah. Yeah, I had to look it up. It was savory gelatin. Mint treat. jello with Vienna sausages, mm. lettuce because that belongs in jello. Oh my god. And green olives and pimentos. Yeah. Tiny tangent. I used to, um, for a long time, I did work uh, doing closed captioning for videos for the hearing impaired. Cool. Oh, I fucking love that job. That sounds dope. I love that job. You just because, type really like, fast or yeah, what? I type super fast. Well, yeah, you do. I and, don't. Um, yeah. <laughs> well, and I had a background in, in video editing, so it was really easy oh, for sick. me. And I was working my way up to do um, like live closed captioning because that's when you do like a baseball game. You make fucking so much money. You yeah, I so bet. much money. 
Um, but then I got pregnant again and I was like, my hands swelled up and I got carpal tunnel from being pregnant. So I kind of stopped it. Dude, you should go back to that. That's no, dope. I do love that work. Well, when you type so fast, like, honestly, mm-hmm. I don't think that that skill should be wasted. As oh, somebody who types you. real fucking slow, <laughs> I, I'm not kidding. I look at my hands when I type. I, Dave gets weirded out because I'll be looking at him across the room while I'm typing That's something so and he's cool. like what are you doing I was like I'm writing my book while I'm listening to you it's fine everything's fine but um <laughs> oh god I wish so I used to do I used to close caption all kinds of stuff from like YouTube videos to TV shows like movies everything and there was a woman who did this I wish I knew they never gave me any of the information like who what where when I could watch it if I recognized it, great. If not, I was fucked. And so, um, but it was this woman who was like a modern day, she was like a goth, um, a goth chef, but she only cooked with an instant pot and she made things like pickled pig's ears and aspic in her, in her fucking instant pot. And it was so good. And every time she would release the, the button, she would do this little dance. Like when you release the pressure on your instant pot, you flip the thing over and it goes, shh. And she would do this like, Whoa! It was really exciting. That sounds and cute, but I'm yeah. I'm stuck in when you said it's so good. I'm like, you've never smelt or had never. pickled pigs anything. Never. But my her grandmother would eat that shit. Pickled Whoa. pigs knuckles, pickled pigs feet. My fucking grandma. Pickled pigs my grandma faces. Had chicken feet. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Pig faces. She made a grilled pig face with st- I think her whole thing was making gross shit in the instant pot, making it really cute. It was a great YouTube Kudos to her. show. Yeah, it was fucking awesome. I would watch that for sure. I wish they had given me the stuff because she made all of these lovely, horrifying ass <laughs> things in her instant pot. You know, if you that's kind of cool anyway. Because I would love it. She had like I didn't know you can make cold stuff in an instant pot. I didn't either. She has Betty Page bangs. She's fucking amazing. If you know who she is, DM me or email me, utterly unrelated pod at Gmail. I have to know who she is because she's amazing. I want to know also. Yeah, send it. <laughs> End of <derailment>. <laughs> <laughs> no, like that just made me think of I I was doing a bunch of data entry yesterday uh last night into early this morning and I was like I am top shit because I only well no that's a lie I was going to say I only looked at my hands a little when I was entering the numbers but like 15% of the time I didn't look at my hands that's and I great. got it right 80% of the time That's awesome Eighty percent of fifteen percent of the time, <laughs> I got it right by not looking. I mean, it was only on like the zero and enter and one, two, and three. Fuck that. One stuff. time I hit. Nothing. Well, I hit eight when I was trying to hit seven, but then I hit back and I hit. I hit seven. Hell yeah. And it was cool. Yeah. See? I was typing That's like Aaron. Awesome. Hell yeah. Eighty percent of fifteen percent <laughs> of the time. I just upgraded my my because I'm oh. Long story short, I'm doing my last, last, last fucking draft of my third book, and I'm on the third draft of my fourth book, so I'm in the thick of it, and I got one of those keyboards that is split down the middle, and then ergonomics, so it's like this, so you're typing, you're typing the same direction that your elbows are facing out. And that is fucking challenging. Yeah. Oh, yeah, I bet. Because nothing is where it's supposed to be, and it's all by touch. And I'm used to, like, elbows I, in. Yeah, I can't type yeah. like this, let alone like this. I don't know. Maybe I'd do better because they're both super fucking foreign to me. It's crazy. <laughs> well, I was getting these crazy muscle spasms up my neck and into my shoulders, and then my arms were going dead. And I was like, I need to do something. <laughs> and I'm like, it's fine. I switched. Yeah, everything's fine. I switched it, and I was like, oh, my fingers are so happy. But what the hell am I typing? It's gibberish. That doesn't make any sense. Welcome to my fucking world. <laughs> I had to back up. <laughs> Oh man! I use voice to text. Oh, I love it! I finally figured out. How you to. have been the victim of many of my voice to texts. But I speak voice to text. Sometimes <laughs> it's really funny, though. It is. Sometimes I do send some. Every now and then, I will send some shit, and I'll just be like, "Well, I didn't mean to say that, <laughs> but it's funny as fuck, and I'm sure she will laugh. So I'll just send it and let you figure <laughs> totally. out what I meant." Because yeah. usually by that point, I'm like, I don't even know where I was going with that. So I'm just... <laughs> and I'm like, oh, yeah, totally. I know what you meant to say. Yeah. 47 vaginas. Makes perfect yeah. sense. <laughs> like, you know what we I need for it. this aspect. <laughs> yeah. Bees, jizz, and 47 <laughs> vaginas. 47 yeah. vaginas. <laughs> <laughs> so I only have five more note cards, but these are good ones. Okay. Okay, so I'm going to give you... All right, so office tie-in. The many faces of Pazuzu, Pazuzu, his stats. <laughs> Fun facts, 
bonus Pazuzu. Which do you choose, Erin, for 1100 I want fun facts first. Okay, fun facts. Fun facts for 1100 mm -hmm. Um. Aw, oh, man, I already told you this. Uh-oh. Yeah, they had a reefer guy. Okay, we can we can redo. Okay. Um bonus Pazuzu. Bonus Pazuzu for eleven. <laughs> All right. I mean, it's gonna be out of context because you oh, didn't okay. get Paz No, I'm kidding. No, that's oh, I'm on, just being a dick. No, that was actually a good card to pick. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, no, I'm just being an asshole. Okay. None of these have to be in any sort Even of context. She's an asshole. She's not really an asshole. I'll take it. I'm mischief. <laughs> mischief is I'm funny. a mischief guy. Bonus Pazuzu. Okay, so the name of Professor Farnsworth, Futurama, mm -hmm. name of his gargoyle is Pazuzu. Oh my god. It yeah, is. yeah, it's totally. the one who dives in and saves him when he's circling yeah. the drain in the Fountain of Youth. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, it's Pazuzu. Um, another Pazuzu, I don't know if you know this, this is a true crime tie in. Ooh. Okay, so you know how you can't pick your, your own nickname? Yeah. Well, this guy did, and he leaned into it. <laughs> <laughs> He was born John Alexander Lawson. Okay. It's a good fucking name, it's I think. It's a good name. Mm. Lawson's a great name. All of it. All yeah. of it's a good name. Yeah. So you like Alexander. Oh, I love Alexander. It's yeah. Best. John Alexander Lawson. That's a good name for... That's a good all-purpose name. It is. Totally. But he was like, fuck that. I'm leaning into <gasps> it. <gasps> this guy! Yeah. I have seen articles on this guy. He changed his name legally in 2002... To Pazuzu Ala Algarod. That's right. He was a stinky cult leader who, like, showered once a year because he, and he would not, oral hygiene was foreign to him. He oh. said that um, by, like, brushing your teeth or bathing or anything like that, it would rid your body of its own defenses. Oh, fuck off. Yeah, it's like opposite day, homie. Opposite <laughs> totally. day. Right. Did your t how long did your teeth last? You know oh, what I mean? No, like no, no. He took his teeth into his own hands and he filed them into points. Oh, that's right. Didn't he have face tattoos and shit? Yeah, shitty ones. Yeah, real prison style ones. Real bad, yeah. Oh, Google this guy. This dude definitely got some tattoos at the river. Yes, he did. <laughs> By a pit bull. By a pit bull. A blind pit bull. Uh, yes, actually. Um, he is, oh, if, and if you want to know more about this guy. Didn't, wasn't there something weird with his mom? Yeah, she fucking lived there. Yeah. The whole time. Okay, so, uh, there was a docu, a docu-series, uh, called The Devil You Know on Vice. Oh, yeah. yeah. And so that's why, like, when I did the tie-in to Pazuzu, I was like, oh, yeah, that fucking weirdo. Um, he would have orgies, which actually going back to, like, I think our first episode of How Did Those Smell... <laughs> Totally. You don't believe in fucking. Oh, yeah. And he had pointy just... teeth. How was that oral? God, right? Yeah. Do you think he even did it or was he one of those guys that's like. Mm, yeah, uh, I don't think he did. I don't eat that pussy. Yeah. I think that he was kind of probably incel about it. Yeah. I bet you're right. Probably not even a nipple lick. I mean, hopefully those fucking pointy ass teeth. I don't want anything to do with his D. Snyder grill. <laughs> um. Oh, he claimed to control the weather, which actually Pazuzu, like the Pazuzu Pazuzu, yeah, um, controlled. What was it? Um, the wind. Wasn't it it was there? like hurricanes and floods or some shit. Yeah, something. yeah. So kind of weather. Well, cheater pants. You think because you take his name, you get his powers? That's not how demons work. Dude. Right, bro? Exactly. Come on. Oh, I even noted orgies. Stinky orgies. <laughs> Gag. I, Gag. I noted that twice. <laughs> it's it. important. You yeah. have to know. That's disgusting. He killed himself in prison in 2015. And here's how articulate I was when I wrote the note. Bled out of arm. <laughs> Bled he out slit of his wrist. That's all he did. He slit his left wrist. Yeah, he bled out of arm. Just the left one. Lazy. I know. Jesus. So he bled out of arm. That fucking guy. Okay, now we have office tie-in. Mm. Many faces of Pazuzu. Pazuzu. His stats. I gotta go office tie-in. Yeah, good call. So good call. So. Okay, and this is actually kind of like a... It's, it's a grab, but whatever. Um, so, Jason Miller, the guy who played Father Karras. Yeah. In uh, 2001, he died at the age of 62, which he was okay. a he lived his he lived through the 70s, you know. <laughs> uh, it was a heart attack. Um, I guess like he 
I don't know if he had like alcohol abuse issues or if he was just a 70s guy you know what i mean like totally it's, it's some people i mean as a bartender some people don't necessarily have issues they just like the scene you know totally. um but he was definitely a regular like he fucking practically lived at that bar um he had a heart attack and fell off of his bar stool and by all accounts he was dead before he hit the ground he which wow. he died at his favorite bar doing what he liked Likely surrounded by the people who he liked best. Best way to go. Fucking right. Only second to going to sleep. Yeah. My my friend Jake went that way. Yeah. Um, Actually, my uncle also. My Uncle Jerry went that way. And yeah. You have an it's, Uncle Jerry? I did. I had an Uncle Jerry. My Uncle Jerry died. Did he die recently? Yes. Like in the last five years. Oh, my God. Years. Oh, no. Uncle You're Jerry died like, I, like, yeah, like last year weird good dude too oh my god my uncle jerry was the best oh man he's so nice yeah His uncle jerry was Andy, awesome my cousin we were born like a day or two apart like Crazy. same year everything yeah huh yeah yeah uncle jerry was dope wow. yeah he he went out the way that everyone would want to anyway what makes it office tie-in mm-hmm. is that happened in scranton yeah dun 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 dun, dun, dun. I love it. Yes. So All we have right, two more cards. Two. two more cards. The stats of Pazuzu. Oh, you're going to like this one. <laughs> you're going to like this one, friend. I like it. You know what? The faces of Pazuzu, it just is uh, the people who played her doing things. So oh. this, we are ending oh. on stats of Pazuzu. This yes. one's actually a really good note. Um, so Pazuzu typically was depicted as having the body of a man, the head of a lion or dog, or both. Sometimes he had like three heads. Totally. Um, talons of an eagle, Ooh. two pairs of wings, and a scorpion's tail. So you oh. know, like when a little kid makes up an imaginary friend and they're all just mixed parts. Mm-hmm. That's what he is. Like Bing Bong from precisely inside out mm-hmm. wow mm-hmm. that is precisely it which actually kind of fits because pazuzu like generally uh if because pazuzu is a real dude they didn't just make him up yeah uh well i mean he's a real demon if you're into that thing yeah um so that actually fits because typically where his amulets are found is with pregnant people or um, near cribs, near babies. Because Pazuzu's arch enemy is Lamashtu, who preys upon pregnant people and babies. No way. Yes. Yes. That makes sense with that Treehouse of Horrors with Maggie where she, yeah, yeah. she gets the Pazuzu Yeah, thing. because Pazuzu wow. protects babies, so he's not all bad. Also, huh. he's got a serpentine penis. <laughs> serpentine. Snakes have two dicks. Yeah, I was going to say, is it like It's called a hemipenis. Oh my God. Where he's got two dicks. So actually, Google it, it's... Weird. Of course I had to Google what snake dicks look oh, like. So it's two tiny uncircumcised penises because nobody, <laughs> nobody, nobody will know. I looked, nobody will perform <laughs> snake circumcisions. So oh you cannot circumcise your snake. Only uncircumcised snakes exist in the world. So two uncircumcised penises on either side, like eat your little legs. <laughs> I'm Google it right now. Oh my god! I am so serious. Oh We're gonna god. put that up on the Instagram. Okay, so my oldest son's name is Damien, um, and so when Father Damien jumps out the window with the demon in him, this is gonna go back to the omen. And <sighs> yes, it is. So okay, so he dies. But the demon was in him. So technically the demon is freed. So all he did was kill himself for no reason, right? Yep. That's that was my so, thought too. Like the S You can't kill the fucking demon. No. The S T demon in the movies. What are they called? Oh my god. It follows? Yeah. So the S T D S T demon in It Follows, same shit. If you kill yourself, it don't matter because all you did was the demon's just gonna yeah, jump. That's right? true. So, That's true. What the fuck? What was the point? That is the grossest little dicks I've ever seen. <laughs> oh, man. Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. They're even oh. two different colors. 
There's so icky poo poo. That one's that one's There's got those spikes. Spiky. Oh wait, go back, go back, go back, hit back one mm-hmm. moment. That's a no. That's a dick with a <laughs> dick on it. That's a snake booping noses <laughs> with a dick. I have to say. When you showed me that picture of Justin Bieber's dick, I think it might have ruined my life. It was jarring, it right? It was so bad. <laughs> and, uh, okay, that's just a snake having sex with a giant centipede. What the fuck? Okay, maybe don't Google snake dicks. Do Google snake dicks. <laughs> um, yeah, I saw a picture of Justin Bieber, and I was just like, I just flashed to his dick, and it yeah. just made me want to vomit. It was... I'm sure my vagina is not great to look at, <laughs> but nobody has seen my vagina on the internet. It's just, Justin so. Bieber's situation is just unkempt. His dick stylist <laughs> is Should wild. Be fired. Yeah. Because they are not doing their job. No, that is 70s. Okay, so I may cut all of this. Um, I'm not sure, but uh, in... T- <laughs> <laughs> Keep her sleazy. Yeah. <laughs>